Hello and welcome to You Basic, the podcast where we read YA fantasy and avoid our adult responsibilities. I'm one of your hosts, Danny, and I wanted to slap every single character but Cordelia in this book. And I'm your other host, Deadly, and this book really changed my opinion on Grace. Podcast, we are going to be talking in depth about Chain of Iron, so if you haven't read it already, uh, there will be spoilers. Okay, so here we are again. I feel like all we've done is film, <laughs> record even, record podcasts this month because we, me and Deadly were just saying how flipping hectic this month has been for oh my releases. God. YA authors like, really said, this month, hi! They really said, buckle in, besties, because you're going to have a wild <laughs> ride. Yeah. Like, and a wild ride we had with this book. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my god. I think, yeah, this has been one of, like, especially with Shadowhunters, we get quite passionate about it. But this book, whew, we have had some discussions. I was literally messaging Deadly. I was like, Deadly, because I was, I was like, finished it before Deadly. I was like, yeah. I'm so angry. Like, the ending of this, like, the last 100 oh. pages of this book, I cannot, I will never forgive her for this. I was like, if. If it doesn't go a certain way in the next books, I'm never reading another Shadowhunters book it again. That's how angry I oh, was. It was. It's such like it's so frustrating because it's such a good book, but this the ending, as you say, the last 100 pages made me so angry that I was like, "Fuck this book! I'm not. I don't care." Da, da, da. And I'm like, actually, no, I did really enjoy it, but oof. The thing is, though, like, it's ob- that's what she meant to do. She meant oh, to make completely. us feel these things. And I'm so angry at her for wanting to cause us this pain and anxiety. <laughs> because I know that we asked for it, but this is just, it's just too much. Yeah, Cassie like, we Besty, love it, really... but, but we, we hate it at the same time. Exactly. And you know what? This is really fun because this is the first Shadowhunters podcast that we're technically doing, which hey. is fun because... If you didn't know, listeners, this is how Dudley and I became close friends. It's through the Shadowhunters fandom. Yes. So I feel like it's like come full circle now that we have a podcast <laughs> where we talk about YA fantasy books and we're talking about Shadowhunters, which is yeah. the first YA fantasy book we really spoke about, which is we exciting. Yeah, we owe a lot to Shadowhunters, definitely. It definitely helped us connect and realise that we had a lot in common. Um, yeah. And here we are for the ride because... Yes. She's really buckling us in because we haven't got that many se- seasons, no, that many like series of books left in Shadowhunters. No, we only have we have one more book of this, and then we have one more book in the Eldest Curses series, and then we have the Wicked Powers. Wicked Powers, yeah, we... which we are so excited about. Oh my god! And then that's Those it. She's phase. not writing any more Shadowhunters. Oh. Yeah, she's I'm not, not ready, writing any honestly. more Shadowhunters books. Because she, she tweeted about, like, another series that she's working on. And you sent it to me on Twitter, like, what even? No. Yeah, because it's coming out, I think, before the, dark, like, Dark Powers. And I was like, excuse me, miss. We need the Dark Powers before I read anything else. Like, I need it. I need to come full circle. I mean, I'm not ready for it to end. But no. I really do want that book series. I'm so excited for it. Me too. So, uh, in today's episode, we are going to obviously talk about this book, things we liked, things we didn't like, predictions for the next book, uh, and just get into it, really. Yeah. We're going to start with the dislikes, as usual, because we always start on negative, and then we like to finish on a positive. Exactly. Um, that's what we tell ourselves, but we just like to rant and rave to begin with, and get all our frustration <laughs> out, and get then out the go, like, yeah, and then go, fo- like, positive for the rest of the episode. Yeah. Because yes. that's how we do it on this podcast. We rant and rave, and then we get, oh, actually, you know what? We've said all these horrible things about it, but we actually did really like the book. <laughs> <laughs> that's just how we roll. So I think the first thing on the list, and I think this first thing that is going to be on a lot of people's lists, yes. is the the incest thing. Yeah. You know, the implied incest, but it's not really incest, but it, it is. Yeah, it's... And I said to... Oh. 
it's not it's not right at all and i said to deadly i said i didn't i was like no spoilers but she's done it again and i knew exactly and i feel like you instantly knew what i meant and completely i was like i'm telling you now if this happens i'm not reading another book i'm not doing it like if the reaction was any different to what grace gave us I would have not been picking up that last book had it been done. I'm so glad that Grace was like, nah. (laughs) Yeah, same. Because I couldn't do another one again. I couldn't do it again. Not at the the ripe old age of 22 could I go through another incest plot. We, Shadowhunter, Cassie has an interesting rep, and I think we've touched on this lightly before, but like, especially with younger audiences that didn't grow up with her, and on TikTok, a lot of people really don't like her or her writing because of um, incest kind of related issues. <laughs> yes. Uh, so we just thought it was very brave for her to mention that again. We don't we, think it was the right no, choice. We were like, you've come so far. Like, all these newest books are so progressive and so fantastic and so diverse. And then I was like, really? You've just knocked yourself back, like, years? Yeah. She hit us with that one. And we went, oh, God. Oh, my God. I just did not like it. I thought, literally, it made me... I just... I just despaired. Like, I was just like, oh, for goodness sake, yeah. not again. Like, I can't do it. It's not even entertaining. That's the thing. that It adds nothing to no, it. It's not entertaining. Just, it doesn't make sense. It just feels icky. And especially since and, Grace is like... Like, I feel like her mum's going to force her into it, but she does not want to do it at all. She is like, nah. I really don't think... De- Deadly, I really can't... You can't say that she's going to force her into do it because I can't read it. And that's the thing, I cannot read her even attempting it because it will make me ill. No, same. I mean, I I have faith in Grace. Like, who would have thought me before this book saying I have faith in Grace? But Grace as a character has really... She's starting to grow a backbone... And she's starting to, like, realise that she can be her own independent, like, being. Yeah. Uh, so I'm really hoping she nips that in the bud. Because, yeah, oof. I just... I can't deal with any more of it. It's gross. Even though they're not technically related, it but doesn't matter. It's, it's, <laughs> you, if you get into technicalities, I'm like, this is when it's a problem. When you're like, but technically, I'm like, well, they were still raised together. And she, but I think it's gross. I I'm hoping the way that it will be spun is that Tatiana asking that of Grace will be the final thing that snapped Grace out of her like influence. I think that's what. Yeah, I think that's what she was implying that that was that was it. That was her. Yeah, like, well, that's what like, she's like line, nah. because. She, yeah, because she she cares so much for Jesse and like mm-hmm. her whole like she's dedicated so much to him that she doesn't want she wouldn't want that and she wouldn't yeah. want to hurt Jesse and I think she knows that Jesse and, Lu- and Lucia are, are a thing and I don't think she would want to hurt Jesse in that way no. um, but I just feel like it was a really weird thing for Cass to do I don't think we needed Tatiana to be we did, We believe that Tatiana's unhinged anyway we didn't yeah. need her to imply we that for her to be even more imp- we didn't need it so I just don't get it and I didn't like that give anything. It really did make me re. I, I did think about just not reading anymore because I just thought I can't do it again. No, and I've I can't. never done that with Cass's book ever. Like, I, I forgave her for that first time, but I read this and I was like, geez. I was like, no, I literally can't do it again. Exactly. I can't. And, and like, first so time, I'm it was, like, I'm glad it was for the a reaction. different era. Like, it was different times. Whereas now I'm like, yeah. you know, you know better and you still went, oop, we'll throw that in. I'm like, why? But for why? Yeah. It's embarrassing. Like it, it added nothing to the story. I was just like, God. Oh God. Oh, anyway, I yeah. can't talk about it anymore. It's gross. Well, I think we, that's what, we're all under the same. Yeah, it gave us a, such a bad tone at the end of the book because I was loving that book, and then I was like, yeah. Ew. Exactly. It just put me straight off it. I was like fuck's sake yeah. literally honestly I, just, I literally i think i actually even did that i think i went no and i was like oh for goodness sake but yeah like we said i'm glad that like grace's reaction was like instant repulsion and like yeah. that gives me faith that we're not gonna get it again in the next book but who knows yeah. let's hope <sighs> okay yeah next point so next rage point <laughs> this one's what raged me the most out of everything 
apart from the incest, was Matthew fucking off to Paris with Cordelia at the end of the fucking book. Oh my god! Excuse me, excuse me, sir. What the fuck do you think you're doing? Look, who gave you the right? Who? He's no. married to your parabatai. Oh my She's god! She's married to your parabatai. Like, who gave you the fucking right? Oh, I'm sorry. You didn't get your own way again. So let's go and like cause a scene once again, Matthew. Literally. How how child he <sighs> he really? I get. I said at the start of the podcast, I was like, I want to slap every single one of these characters. The person that'd be getting the hardest slap <laughs> and would be first to get that hardest slap and then last to get the slap because I'd do it twice is Matthew. Yep. Because what the fuck was that boy doing this whole this whole book? Boy, honestly, I'm like. I I mean Matthew is one of my favorite characters just in general but this book I could not justify what he was doing I was like no stop it I just want to slap him I was like, what, what are you doing and like we had some really fantastic moments which we'll touch on later in the stuff we liked with him and Cordelia um but I just I don't like the love I I feel like they could be really great friends and I'm like just We've stop already pushing spoken. that love triangle We've already spoken about our hatred for love triangles on this podcast. We are thoroughly over the love triangle trope. We hate the love triangle trope. We cannot stand the love triangle trope. If you haven't heard us rant about the love triangle trope and you want to hear us rant about the love triangle trope, (laughs) go listen to our predictable predictable episode. Yeah, and you will hear us rant and rave about how much we hate uh, friends to lovers, not enemies to lovers. We love enemies to lovers. Yeah, But... I cannot stand it. And I just think that it's the same thing again. You've got a character who... You have two characters that have fantastic chemistry and you have one character (laughs) who's like, doesn't have good chemistry with them. But if they do have some sort of chemistry, it's because they're friends. And I feel like we're getting another repeat of Jem, Tessa, Will. And I know I'm going to offend some people here when I say this, but I do not like Jem and Tessa together. I don't. And that's I don't care. I really don't care that Will's dead now and that they're together and it's been hundreds of years who gives a shit i'm telling you now if i was married to will herondale and i'd loved will herondale i would never love again and that's on period and i definitely wouldn't be in love with his best friend yeah i mean i again i love and then it's the same thing with matthew is that i love jeb as a character but not not as a love interest exactly i love jem but i don't love him with tessa yeah completely and like she was obviously gonna pick Will. He exactly. Pick Will. No it's, offense, Jen. I'm it's the, sorry. It's the same but... here. Like she's Cordelia's never gonna pick Matthew in a million years. She's head over heels in but... love with James, and he knows that. Exactly. And you know what it is? It's it's the same thing again. Like no, sorry, that's not fair. Actually, I'm not gonna shove that Jem and um, uh, Matthew in the same category here because like jem had a lot of like stuff going for him he was like really nice I, you know like i said i really liked Jem. Mm-hmm. but then i'm like going to matthew i'm like oh matthew you're a fucking alcoholic mate you're, you're an ass- alcoholic with an attitude problem you're selfish you're high key selfish mm-hmm. you're rude to a lot of people you ain't got a lot of stuff going for you you're not working very hard and yeah. i just think why would she go for that obviously and you, you look at james and you think james is the complete opposite and you think it's not even like a thing where she's like oh it's i don't know which one i prefer i don't know if i like no like and you know I'm... what and even in this <sighs> case i'm like i guess it was a bit of a love like a com it was a competition like tessa was like oh i don't know which one i prefer when we all know which one she preferred yeah but literally. she was like i like jem for this and i like will for this but she liked will for a lot more than she liked jem but with this, it's like Cordelia's just not even interested in the slightest bit no, <laughs> in Matthew. Li- so I just cannot fathom it. She literally, when Matthew said that he liked her, she was like, sorry, what? Because like, yeah, she, she just didn't like, see it. Bestie vibes only. She's like, bestie yeah, vibes literally. only. Bestie vibes <laughs> only. And I was like, yeah, it is kind of odd. Completely. And like Matthew knows that she's so in love with James. Like, he knows. They've talked about it. I just, he's one of the only ones I that just, knows. I don't know, and I feel like that he's doing this because he just, he is punishing himself. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's making him, he's convincing himself he loves girls that are never going to love him back. Completely. So he doesn't have to be with them because he's punishing himself Completely. for it. And I just think it's not right. And I don't think it's right to to put Cordelia 
through that because I'd feel fucking crap if someone was like, oh, I love you. And I'd be like, and I didn't like them back. And then literally and well, they weren't doing it because they, I don't think he genuinely feels that way about her. And that's the thing. I just think he's infatuated with her. I don't think he's in love with her. I think she. I think he thinks she's really interesting. And also, she's the only one that listens to him. She's known him the least, and he has, like, confided so much in her that he is just even... mistaking friendship for actual affection. It's like me. If a cashier is nice to me at Tesco's, I'm like, oh my god, we're going to get married. But that is not how it happens. Like, he's, he's just starved of attention. Yeah, but I don't think, like, I don't think it's fair to say that she's the only person that listens to him. I think she's the only person that, like, tells him off. And then, yeah, because I think James is a really good friend to him. I really do. But he doesn't talk and, like, to James. To be he hasn't honest, told him about his mum. I know, but that's not James's fault. James no. is, like, going, bait mate, what's wrong? And he's going, oh, yeah. fuck off. Like, he's, Completely. oh, no, I'm sick. I'm brooding. Oh, God. He's alienating everyone besides Cordelia. He's like, my life's so hard. I'm a rich white boy who has a lot of money and can move out into my own flat when my parents annoy me and call me an alcoholic. And James is like, okay, <laughs> I have a bracelet on that's literally making me ruin my life i keep waking up in the middle of the night and i might be a serial killer um my marriage is a sham um grandfather's literally a prince of hell my grandfather yes i keep going to literal hell and back and sorry you're a slight alcoholic and you won't tell me why i bet james is thinking what the fuck is going on i'm like he's like his heart his life's hard has he tried living my life Literally. But to be honest, he never throws back at that in his like he never throws that back no. in his face. And I'm like, Matthew, just get a grip. Just, they, <laughs> I Matthew just really want to shake talk, him. Yeah, he just needs to talk to James. Like they're parabatai, that's the whole point. Exactly. Oh. I just I don't know. I just I feel like we, we see like Jem and Will and they've got the most fantastic parabatai oh, bond. They're perfect. And you've got Alec and Jace, who perfectly complement each other and have yeah. an amazing parabatai bond. And then we, we saw a not-so-good parabatai bond between Jules and Emma, but that Emma. was because they were in love and... Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we're now getting another weird parabatai yeah. bond that I'm just not... I don't know. Like, why do we keep... Like, I thought... I don't know. And, like, Simon and, like, Clary were such a good yeah, parab- Like, completely. they were meant to be parabatai. Like, I just... And then I'm, I'm, I'm seeing two now, and I'm like, oh, God. And then, like, I guess the same... Like, similar with Lucy and Cordelia. Like, mm. what the fuck are they doing? Like, why is Lucy telling all these other. lies mm. and keeping secrets? It's like... It's like... I don't know what to think anymore. Well, these friendships well, are all, like, yeah. battered and bruised. Completely. And I think... I guess it's Cassie trying to explore the parabatai one more, and it's not all perfect. But it just hurts because, like, we stake a lot in a, like Parabatai because, like, that's what we know. Um, but yeah, and, like, and yes. like, yeah, when Ugh. like they were like Lucy ripped apart when like Will and Jem were ripped apart. Oh and my god, that oh, that chapter it was like is impossible. Heartbreaking. To read. It, oh. it is impossible to read that. It just killed me. But then, like, I think when like James and like and like Matthew are not telling each other things, and I'm like. But Will and Will and Jem would never. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, they would literally. They like they would share very... everything. Yeah, even like when they both were in love with the same person, they were kind of like, yeah, we have both got re- really good taste, and they were like just like <laughs> open with it. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? Honestly, and like I don't know. Matthew just needs to get a fucking grip. The thing is, why would you James, take James your has girl? An excuse because his the bracelet has been like dulling his senses. And making him not talk to people, and like he feels like he's in a fog. I guess Matthew also is in a fog, but it's alcohol. <laughs> but I'm like, yeah, stop. And I'm, I'm hoping that's he what like, Cordelia did say. She was like, "You aren't drinking in Paris if we go." Um, he's gonna be drinking in Paris. He'll be like, have a fucking flask on or something. I hope she fucking rips him a new one though. She best do. She will do. It's Cordelia. Oh my god. We, we could trust Cordelia. Yes. She will go in. Yeah. And I just think, wow, you've just took your, your best friend's girl to... Your best friend's wife. <sighs> you're going to the, like, city of love. Literally. I just think that's such a kick in... What a little bastard. If I was Literally. James, I'd be like, 
the fuck are you doing, mate? Like, I've put up with a lot, and now you're really just taking the piss. I know, literally. And the, I mean, James, in those in that final chapter, was, li- like you said, he was just like his dad. He was such a dumbass for saying, like, I could never love you like Grace. Like, obviously, we know he means he doesn't love Grace, but sh- Cordelia thinks he's been in love with Grace, like, head over heels. <sighs> so he's just a dumbass. Honestly. That was such a Will moment. Like you said, yeah, Will would have said the exact same thing to Tessa. Like, a bit all cryptic. When he when he thought he was, um, oh. like, uh, cursed. And he He's was like, like oh, God. I, I'm <laughs> not allowed to love anyone. And I was like, and Tessa was like, sorry? Like, he, she, he just did the same thing. He was like, oh, never love you like I love Grace. What? I literally threw the book across oh, the room. I was, I was so angry. I was like, why human. would you say it like that? I was like, don't and you then, dare. And then it's like, I knew oh, they were going to get dragged away to like, some drama. threw herself over him. And, oh and, my God. And it said he heard footsteps on the steps behind. And I was like, bet you that's Cordelia. Check if it's Cordelia. Yeah. And he fucking yeah. didn't. And I was like... Oh my God. I just... I, and he thought we'd be clever pretending that he was like... <laughs> I just... Oh. I saw it all coming. I was like, you are so Literally. stupid. Stupid boy. He's getting a slap. He's getting a good fucking slap. One, two. Because, like, Cordelia's well in her rights to be fucking pissed. Because she said, I don't want you to see Grace. And then he saw Grace and kissed her. And then led her into the house and said, thank God you're breaking off your engagement. So, of course, she's going to be like, nah, I'm getting out of this house. But, like... I really don't have... I don't. I can't. Because it makes me so angry. This is really dredging up all the feelings I have towards this book. I'm so angry... It's such Will James. vibes. Oh, it really is. It is Will vibes. Will vibes, but I don't know. I just why would he say it like that? This whole thing. It's my, it's Daisy, my Daisy, my Daisy, my Daisy. I know. Yeah, my Daisy, my Daisy, my Daisy. This, and then he's like, says stupid shit like that. You say all the right things, and you say all the wrong things, James. Ugh, I mean, honestly. Oh, speaking of anyway, um, <laughs> all the right things and all the wrong things. Can we talk about the Paladin plot twist? No. That broke my oh. heart. And you know what? You know what? My hat comes off to Cass because I didn't see it coming. No, me neither. I didn't. And, I, and I'm and i shocked that I didn't see it coming because like we said, we've read a lot of YA. We've read a lot of Cassie's books yeah. and we shouldn't have been fooled. But we were. Both of us, I think, were fooled. We and when, both, yeah, messaged like, the, what the fuck? Because I think I'd read the bit where we found out that it was Lilith, and then you messaged me, and you were like, oh my god, she's been made the paladin, she's uh, Wayland the Smith's paladin, and I was going, um, yeah, she is. And then I was like, oh god, I'm like going through, I was going through it while Deadly was going, yay, I was like, <laughs> I'm like living my life. Ago. I was devastated, <laughs> honestly, because I was so, I was like, if anybody deserves this, it's Cordelia, mm-hmm. like, she's been gone through, she's gone through some shit, like, some fucking shit, she's had her, the love of her life, she, she ruined herself to, like, save her love, who didn't love her mm-hmm. back, who obviously has been very clear that he didn't love her back, got into a sham marriage that she thinks is doomed when it's not, her yeah. dad died, God, her dad came um, back and then died immediately. Yes, her dad also got like piss ass drunk at her wedding and nearly embarrassed her in front of everyone. He also asked her no. f- husband for fucking money, which so is another thing that made me want to literally made me want to die. Like I can't when he was like, and then she had to go at him for it. Anyway, we'll get into that in a minute. Literally. <laughs> All this crap happened, and then I was like, "Oh my god, she's a paladin! I'm so happy!" I was literally crying. I think I was literally crying yeah, happy tears. I cried. And then it was Lilith. I was it like, was "Not such this a motherfucker!" Twist of the knife. Like Cordelia gets screwed over so much. I was like, "Give her this one thing." But Honestly, no. although that you know scene what? I kind of... was so good with Lilith. When she like connected all the dots, like, oh, the fairy was wearing that gem, and then this person yes. was wearing that. I was like, <gasps> and she touched, and she touched the sword, and then was like planted the thing about Wayland oh. the Smith. I thought, how am I so stupid? How didn't I see it? Like, 
neither of us saw it, and we're usually really good with Cass's books because, again, we've read literally every single one. <laughs> I felt, yeah, yeah. I felt, I, do you know what? I felt off with the fairy because mm. I thought the fairies are untrustworthy because of everything we've been through with yeah. all the fairies in all of the books. I thought, I feel like that doesn't feel right, but I couldn't put my finger on what it was that wasn't mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Then Magnus fell off. Yeah, he, he did. felt really off, and I and I don't know what it was that felt off, but he definitely fell off. And but mm-hmm. none of the others, I didn't. Did I doubt Waylon the Smith? I did think it was no. a bit weird that he just came over the hill, but then I also didn't. I didn't even question it. Exactly, and also we've the thing is with Wayland, we've never interacted with a character like that besides Gwyd of the Hunt, who is who was also kind of like distant and weird. So it's yeah. like. We we had nothing to compare it to. Whether whereas at least with Magnus, we know Magnus inside now, and we know the fairies quite well. So it's like yeah, but could not have seen it coming. Absolutely, no way. And I I didn't I didn't like I didn't see. I don't know. I just it was just I don't know why I didn't see it. I think it was I felt it felt off. I don't know if it did or not, if I'm just thinking about it now. And I said, oh, it felt off. But when he was like, do you swear fealty to me? I thought, do we want to do that? No, I think what I thought was, I didn't know if a paladin was good. I, mm. I knew it was good because I play, like, we play D&D and stuff. Because yeah. I, I knew it, like in that contents, but I didn't know if it was good with the shadow hunters. Yeah, completely. So then I, I thought, do I we want to do this? I think it was weird that she didn't say his name. She just said she swore fealty to you. Yeah. I think and that I might have like, been it, that mm, something was off. Yeah. That seems a bit weird. And then when it happened, I was like, fuck's sake. And like, she was so happy when she was using Cortana again and it was working so well. I was like, give her this. Oh my God. And now I'm she's devastated. literally, what's she done with Cortana? We don't know. She's hidden it somewhere. She's done something. Because she was <sighs> like, she did what she had to do with it. And I'm like, what do you mean you did what you had to do? Cordelia, come back here. No, no. Why, why are you going to Matthew? We, we want well, to know we know it's Cortana. nothing. We know it's nothing too ma- like bad because Emma has, has yeah has her. exactly. So we know it's she might have given I don't it. Know she's gem gonna get it back for like safekeeping or something. I don't know. Yeah, but when could she have done that? I don't know. I on don't the know. on the run over to Matthews, like well, ah! she, well so she because she it was gone before she ran over like when she went up to her bedroom uh, she was like it felt empty without cortana so i'm like what have oh, you done shit. yeah oh god anyway. i have no idea but yeah Oof. the fucking paladin plot twist killed me ruined me <gasps> but now we're on to another one another ship <laughs> problem and it's anna and ariadne oh my god oh my god like yeah, Ariadne made a mistake, but she has atoned for it and atoned for it and shown that she's really serious. And Anna, exactly. like you said to me before, Anna is so privileged because she's A, in like a Regency time period, B, from a really yeah. rich family, and C, has a family that accepts her. Whereas Ariadne is in a place she doesn't know. She's like trying to make her way in society as a young lady and also trying not to be ruined and also she's a person of color so it's so hard to like have all these things stacked against you and then also be like i'm a lesbian as well yeah and yeah being like a woman of color in a regency period in london (laughs) when you're an immigrant and i just i don't know like i just feel like anna's being very yeah like privileged she's just like Mm -hmm like flouting a privilege in, and I'm like I really I really really sympathise for Anna and when we read about it in the Ghost of the Shadow Market yes Ghost of the I Shadow think. Market I think that, and yeah, I was it like would, oh it, it broke be. my heart yeah it broke my heart when she like rejected because like, that was the first time she put herself out there and I completely understood her heartbreak and I completely understood where she was coming from not wanting to give her another chance mm-hmm. to begin with and then I just could not understand why she just rejected her again. And I was just like, for goodness sake, like she obviously she's trying and she's not embarrassed by it. She's trying her hardest, but you also have to, you have to just be, 
understanding of the people's oh. situations and I know it's hard when it's easy for you but it, I just I'm not a fan of the way that she's dealing with this I know it's like new but she just needs to be stop being so tone deaf completely and like stop when she took so her tone deaf. she took her into that broom closet and like started making out with her and then just left her like oh no won't do that and I was like that is cruel Anna it is cruel Oh. I agree. I don't know. Anna, I just, I really love Anna, and Anna's one of my favourite characters, oh, but I just was like, she's really just being toned deaf at the minute. And I really, at the end, especially when they had that like bust up. And you know, to be honest, when Ariadne was like, oh, I want a family and the stuff, mm. we also forget that it's freaking Victoria. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, literally. Regency, like- that is the she standard. Yeah, yeah. She wants to have kids, and she's and the reality of the situation is that she probably wouldn't be able to have kids if mm-hmm. they were together. And I was like, to be honest, that's a pretty like normal anxiety to have when yeah. you come into terms with your sexuality. Surely, I don't know. That's me coming as and that's coming from me. Especially as it's I... like as it's shadow hunters, and we've kind of seen it time and time again. Family is so important in shadow hunters. Like, it's what they cling to, is these family names and this family. And, like, Anna gets Anna gets away with a lot because she's kind of like this woman about town, flirting with married women, blah, blah, blah. But for Ariadne, who has kind of been raised to be a homemaker, it must be terrifying yeah. to be like, that could all be stripped away from her. Yeah, and she's also she adopted. Loves. Yeah, she's also adopted. So she feels like she owes her new family something and Mm -hmm. she would be betraying them by doing that. And that is a lot to deal with. I don't know. She's so complex. Exactly. Oh, she's such a good character. We really loved Ariadne. She's not on the slap list. Cordelia and Ariadne are not on my slap list because I just, I really felt for both of them. And Chris, yeah, it's Christopher, Ariadne, and um, Cordelia are on the non slap list. We love them all. Everyone yeah, else. Justice for Ariadne Neither. next book. I really... Yeah, exactly. I hope that Ariadne <laughs> gets to be happy next, Me too. Ep- next I really do. book. Because I just want them to be together and I'm kind of bored of the skipping around each other now. I know. And like that bit at the end where Anna like went and cried on the steps and I was like, you, you obviously are hurting yourself to like exactly. keep up this image that you're trying to have. She's like, I want it to be a hot girl summer forever. You mean they're hanging out in the house, like how well in their underwear? But yes, next on the dislikes is Grace. We're putting Grace in here again because she's a bitch. And you know what? She's grown on me. She's Mm -hmm. grown on me, but I still don't like her. And you know what? It's the ruthlessness. She's ruthless and it scares me. And I think, stop it. Stop it now. And she was just. (laughs) fucking horrible to malcolm she was like oh yeah she's oh my god when she literally that like that's ruined malcolm's life lucy was like "Uh," and i was like "Uh, (laughs) lucy was all of us in that moment (laughs) yeah lucy was literally me in that moment and deadly i just and i was just she's ruthless she's fucking horrible she was the way she manipulated James, it it really infuriated me. I was like, you bitch, you knew exactly what you were doing. And I always thought, I thought the, the reason I would like her, I thought that she, we're going to get a redemption from her. I knew that we were from the start. Yeah. When I read the Bane Chronicles and James is like getting all upset because he's in love with Grace. And I was like, oh, she sounds like a bitch. But I thought well, she's going to get some redemption later on. Yeah. And I thought that the redemption would be that it was Tatiana forcing her hand. She didn't want to do it. Tatiana was forcing her hand and you know what I didn't get that impression from Grace I got the impression that she enjoyed doing it Mm -hmm. she got frustrated when she couldn't do it with James and she wanted to give up because she couldn't do it but I think that she she liked the attention and she liked doing it to other people and she it's like second nature to her and she just shows zero remorse for it I don't think she shows enough remorse for what she did to James no I I didn't think she does too like even at the end when they like had their whole confrontation, she was like, "Oops," like she she didn't really say sorry. She was kind of like, "Oh, yeah, I didn't want to do it," but she's also she's ruined most of James's adolescent life, like all and of it exactly. Like, I'm sorry if you don't have trauma from that. <laughs> Literally, and like I, we know I love a villain, 
So I Grace really grew on me in this book. Um and I think we'll talk about it a little bit in the in the likes, the things I did like about Grace. But again, I do agree that she's just so ruthless. Um I really and no remorse. I yeah, I, I did to be honest, she did like change my mind a bit. Mm-hmm. Like in some respects, so yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, okay, you're growing on me now. I think it was when we were doing like the flashbacks and stuff. Yeah, it it made her more human. I don't I know. Think. It did make her more human, but I still don't like her. It really annoyed. She just was just a cow. I don't know. I, I'm fully prepared for me to simp in the next book. You know when you just get that feeling. I'm like, oh no, it's another one of my problematic faves. Here she comes. Oh my god, deadly. She's so, like, she, just... 100% she is horrible, and she has ruined James's life. <laughs> but she's kind of And cool. Cordelia. And, and Cordelia's. And, and Malcolm's. Um, Malcolm, yeah, Jesus. Oh, honestly, that that scene, because I, I obviously listened to the audiobook. Oh, yeah. So, uh, in case we haven't mentioned this, I am the idiot that bought four copies of this book. Um, <laughs> so I got the, the regular edition and then I got the fairy loot edition and then I got the Waterstones edition and then I realised I wasn't reading it fast enough so I bought the audiobook as well um, yeah <laughs> but so when I was listening to it um, the scene when she told Malcolm I was literally walking along the seafront and I had to stop in my tracks and be like oh my god because, like, we know from the the other books how this one conversation twists his whole life upside down and turns him into something horrible. Uh, because up until this point, he's, like, in these books, he's been such a great warlock um, and really interesting and, like, charismatic. And you're like, when does it happen? When does it twist? And to see that happen, you're like, <gasps> oh, my God. I know, yeah, I just, I think she's a ruthless bitch, and I think we're going to see her soften up later on, and I hope so, and I think that's when I'll, I'll mm. like her, but I just think, like, to now, I just, she really pissed me off this whole book, I was like, mm-hmm. you enjoy it, and you're sick, and then you get, like, some sick satisfaction out of doing it, and I don't believe for a second that she hates it so much, No, and I understand that her hand... She didn't have the choice to become what she is. Like I, I feel sorry for her in that respect. Like Tatiana forced that on her, and I think that she would have quite she would have been nice mm-hmm. if she didn't have that. But she didn't. She isn't completely innocent. No. So I don't know. She just annoys me, and she owes fucking Cordelia a good apology, a good fucking apology. She really does. She has no respect for Cordelia at all. I know, and if I was Cordelia, I'd punch her one in the face. And I'm hoping next one, we she accidentally lamps one on a like. <laughs> but even then, if one. you think like that's gonna have to be a conversation between Cordelia and Lucy, because obviously Cordelia found out that Lucy was hanging out with Grace on the side. I know. Um, and God, that's good. Going... And hadn't Lucy... told her. Lucy being secretive this whole fucking book was pissing me off. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what has anybody, what has Cordelia ever done to anyone to, like, make them think that they can't trust her? Because I swear to God, everyone just keeps shit from her. And I just feel like she doesn't deserve it. And, like, Lucy keeping everything from everyone, I was like, bestie, you're going to get yourself in trouble. And you know what she did? She got herself in trouble. She got herself in trouble. Now she's, like, half dead in a coach to Cornwall. Exactly, and then Will had to come to the station and drag James away from dragging his bestie off the fucking train with his wife, which ruined my life. I was like, for goodness sake! I was like, normally I'm really getting on the train. (laughs) Exactly. Normally I'm really happy to see Will, but in that moment I was like, Will, you couldn't have picked a worse picked a worse time. Literally, it was about to go down. Like sidebar, in the audiobook, Will has a Welsh accent. Um, I feel like that is important information that everyone should know. Uh, Deadly sent me a clip and I was like, oh my <laughs> god, simping. I didn't know it was possible to simp more for Will Herondale, but here we are. Here we are. I mean, and that was like, it was, I, as you say, like, we usually love to see Will, but when he turned up at the station, I was like, not now. Not now. I was like, no. We need to get, we need to stop them from going to Paris, but yeah. oh god, I'm telling you now, I hope they're back from Paris when we get this next book because I cannot starts, like a time damned skip. going to Paris I will just die I have to watch them like gallivant around Paris 
I will not be happy. James being but... depressed in the back of a coach all the way to Cornwall from London. But I feel like they don't understand how much of a journey that is in like Victorian times in a coach. Oh my god, it's going to be horrific. They're like, oh, we're just popping down to Cornwall. I'm like, that is the oh, other yeah. side of the country. <laughs> Wait, so we're like, where is... When they went in the car to <laughs> that place, because I did think that. I was like, what? How did you get there and back in a day? I feel like everyone thinks that the UK is tiny. They're like, oh, you can get to everywhere from London. And I'm like, honey, no. They wouldn't even have the motorway. So <laughs> With all the country <laughs> it, would be, lanes. it would be horrific. And you'd be going like 30 because it's like a <laughs> shitty Victorian engine. You'd be going 30 miles per hour. Oh my god, literally. Like, it's gonna. Lucy's like on the edge of death, and Malcolm's like, ooh, get him a coach to go down to Cornwall. I'm like, it's gonna take a week. <laughs> How are you gonna get them, big man? I don't understand. Oh my god. Oh, oh god, anyway. I hate, yeah, we hated Lucy keeping on these secrets yes. from everyone. It was really just annoying. I was like, can you not just tell your best friend that you're like simping for a ghost? I'm sure she'll get it. <laughs> but like, imagine she's that simping combo. for your brother. She's like, I'm in love with a ghost. You're married I'm to my brother. I'm in love <laughs> with a dead man. And Cuddy would be like, I accept you. Literally. Um, I just want everyone to be more honest. The lies are really stressing me out. Completely. Uh, and I mean, I feel like yeah. that fits the kind of Regency setting. It's very yeah. like Jane Austen. Uh, kind of, yeah, like Bridgerton. period drama. Bridgerton. Yeah. Those vibes. So it's like, oh, yeah. scandal. Um, but a scandal. We need it. We need people to actually talk to each other. Please, this final book. Yeah. We've also put on the list Charles in capital letters. Oh my God. Charles, yes. oh. it was pretty irrelevant, this one, to be honest. But every time he showed up, I was like, fuck you. Every time you. he showed up, something went wrong. And then him asking for Alistair when he woke up, I'm like, you have fobbed Alistair off. You've like made him be alone in London this whole time and not look to him. And then you send a messenger to say you want him when he stood next to Thomas after they've just connected. How dare you? I know. How dare you know what? I'm really surprised that we even got any fucking Shadowhunter descendants from this from this generation because everyone's, everyone's queer. Everyone's fucking gay. <laughs> Literally. Everyone's gay. <laughs> Everyone's gay or in love with ghosts. God damn it! Exactly. I'm surprised that Jason, um, Emma, and uh... wait, where does Emma? What? Yeah. What? Wait. Let me quickly. I'm how gonna... does Emma? But how is Emma a cast ass? She was like, kind of like a. Oh my god! I just because it couldn't cast-ass. have been. It couldn't have been, um, well... Well, it's not Gems. Unless... Well, no, it's not Gems, and it's not Cordelia's because she's a Herondale, and then it can't be, uh, it can't be... Not the first, thingy, but... not the first thing on Google being, did Emic and J- Jules sleep together? <laughs> yes, baby, they did. Yes. Um, yeah, it can't be, uh, why can't I remember Cordelia's brother's name? Alistair. Alistair. It can't be Alistair, because Alistair's gay. So yes. where does Emma come from? Okay, I fa- I'm just Googling the Kirsten's family tree. Not this white-ass edit. Oh my god. It's taking forever to load. Hello. 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 <laughs> okay. Because, I just don't know, this family tree is really messing with my mind. Why is this taking so long to load? Hello? Okay. Um, okay. What? It's the line is going down from Alistair. Oh no. What's going to happen? We're spoiling it. <laughs> it but must be. It must be Alistair. But this is what happens when... <laughs> oh my god. Sorry, someone's fan casted the blonde guy from Glee as Alistair, and I'm like, he's literally Persian, but okay. Um... Oh. What even? Something, yeah, I mean, I look, uh, I always get confused when I look at the family tree. Like, I looked at it before I started this book, and I was like, sorry, how are those two people together? And then a scene happened in this book, and I was like, oh, okay. I yeah, but that, that makes sense, but I just don't get how. Yeah, who's Alistair getting? 
Don't mind me, just going down a Google hole. Is Alistair going to be in some like bid relationship <laughs> that he's going to end up having to have children with to keep the line going? Yeah. Oh, that other that other sibling. That she's pregnant. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. That's clever, actually. <laughs> okay, that was stupid of us. <laughs> she, her, their mum's pregnant. Yeah. Oh my god. This the shadow hunters family tree is so <laughs> confusing. Well, we know it's going to be a boy, so there's that. Yeah. But why is the line going down from Alistair? I'm going to have to do some proper research later. It must. It must be before this book came out, and we knew that she was pregnant. Yeah. 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 Oh uh, yeah. Sorry, yeah. that took us a while to work out. <laughs> That'll probably be heavily edited down. Um I was about to say I was like, if this is another sibling we don't know about, and I was like, there is another sibling. Yeah, there is. <laughs> it's not born yet, but there is one. I know, I keep forgetting that. Not yeah. me ending up on Deviant Art. Oh, okay. Let's go back. Let's get back on track. The last thing on the list that we needed to talk about that we didn't like was the lack of relationship development between Lucy and Jesse. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, this is random. Look, how is that, t- how is that typed? <laughs> the- <laughs> between Lucy Lou and Jesse the relations. <laughs> this is why shared notes are not good. <laughs> Oh my god. But anyway, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like we would love their relationship if we knew more about it because we don't get any info. You know what? I can ship it. I really do. I I think they're going to be cute together, even though it's a bit weird that he's a ghost and dead. And mm-hmm. I don't know how you're going to explain that to your dad, but <laughs> go off. But I just. I feel like they they have the, all these cute things that they do. Like she was holding his hand like it was normal, and he would come and sit in her room. And we never saw any of that develop and become normal. It just was normal. Mm-hmm. And I would have liked to have seen that development because I like a slow burn. We all know that Danny likes a slow burn. Yeah, that's why mm-hmm. I love Sizzy and other ships from other fandoms. But I just feel like we missed that we missed out on that development of their relationship i feel like it's really established and we never got to see any of it Mm -hmm. um and i feel like i would ship it more if i could see their relationship develop i just feel very weird yeah it just kind of went from zero to it like we always got the end of a scene so it was always like oh just as he's about to fade or when he appears and she's like oh hello but I'm like, give us the meat, give us the, the conversation where they connect, because obviously by the end, they're really infatuated with each other, and it's like, give us give us context. Yeah, like, I want to see why you're infatuated with each other, I want to mm. see, I want to root for you so much that it hurts, because I know that you'd be so good together and I want them to be now I'm just like, oh, well, if he didn't make it back as a human, I'd be quite indifferent, because I exactly. don't feel anything towards them. But I and ship it, it, but I'm also like, eh. It hurts me because I really love Lucy as a character. Um, I yeah, think She's same. really great. Her her dialogue is fantastic. She's so funny and sarcastic. And, yeah. like, the, the whole idea of having her as a writer and, like, the beautiful Cordelia, it's so good. And I'm like, she's I just so want es- you to have a like love eccentric. interest worthy of you. Yeah, exactly. She- She's so eccentric, like Will, um, mm. and that's why I really, I really like Lucy. I think she's really lovely, and like, I see so much of her admiration for C- Cordelia in like Will's yeah. admiration for Jen. Completely. Um, and I just love it. I and I, to be honest, I see a lot of Tessa and James. Yeah, complete. Oh, completely. And the way he's quite reserved. Yeah, like you, you think that te- like that James is gonna be like Will because of, no. like boy boy. Yeah. But no, it's like the opposite. Completely. Which is Actually, quite, yeah. Now you've said that, I completely agree because oh yeah, James and Tessa are like like two James is so thought yeah like thoughtful and like he planned the whole house and I was like that's exactly oh, what Tessa would do like house. Tessa's influence and like I know that Will does stuff for Tessa and he like worships her but not in that way like yeah. that is just. Tessa that is Tessa and I could see it in yeah I could just see that in James but I don't remember what we were talking about (laughs) oh it was about about Lucy and Jesse and like yeah Yeah, because because we love her so much we want her to have this great fantastic love story because that's what she writes yeah 
she writes the epic love stories. I want her to have an epic love story, but I feel like I can't resonate with this love story because we've no. had no development. I'm hoping in the next book, because it's obviously going to be her and Jessie in Cornwall with Malcolm, I hope we get some really good scenes, because I would love that. Yeah, I think that'd be really good. But hope so fingers crossed that that's what's happened, but we might miss that a little bit with this yeah. book. Now... We're on to the likes, we're on to the Ooh. good stuff, what we loved, what we simped for, who we simped for, what we <laughs> shipped, what we didn't ship. Well, yeah. not what we didn't ship, because we've gone through that, but... Yeah. We, I mean, if if anything Shadowhunters is good for, it's a good bit of shipping and a good bit of simping. Exactly. Now, first, the first thing on the list is Alistair and Thomas. Absolutely. And you know what? We both died when oh. we read that in the first one. We were like, oh my god. I was like, we ship it so bad. I just loved it. And I was so glad that we actually got some. We got some canon. Like, oh. Yeah, canon. That scene. Like, in like, it was like the, what's it called? The room in the church where they like hold ceremonies and stuff. Where they were being kept prisoner. And like the aesthetics of this. The like gothic architecture. The little picnic with you guys kissing. Oh my god, so cute. Oh, I just wanted to die. It's so I'm cute. Like, and he oh. was like, are you like me? And he was like, no, I'm nothing like you. I was like, oh, you're so broody. <laughs> oh my god, what a broody boy. And I was just like living for the angst. I was so... I just loved oh, it. That whole scene where he was yeah. like, I'm nothing like you. And then his like eyes fell. And then he was like, you're amazing and kind. I was like, oh no, my heart is gone. I know, I was crying. <laughs> I was like, No! And, like, this the whole, like, Thomas trying to be brave and, like, oh, my oh. God, Thomas just... My heart and... was in my mouth for Thomas. I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And then when Alistair I'm was literally... like, and now I've wasted your affection for me, and Thomas was like, uh, no. I was like, I'm, like, tearing up. Oh, my God, I cried. I love it because... Fully, oh. It's so good. And that's, I think... It's like... Cassie does it so well, is that she writes... LGBT romance the same way she would write straight romance in that it's so authentic yeah. and so yeah. it's not like oh, and they were gay it's like there's awkward moments and it's and it's not a focal part of it and it's oh it's so good it's yeah so good. I just I love it I love them together oh. I just think they're so cute I just uh, <laughs> I just Matthew fucking annoys me. Him attacking like Alistair. I'm like, for Christ's sake, Alistair's like, Alistair's been through some shit as really well. Has. Him and Cordelia have been like, lay off him a bit, and that's another thing. That sorry, I'm going back to my Matthew <laughs> slander, but he's just really pissing me off. His entitlement, like the way he just thinks he can like attack people. Like we all, yeah, he fucked up. Alistair fucked up. No one's perfect. You fucked up. Yeah. And, sorry. Yeah, you're not you're not fucking innocent, are you, Matthew? Literally, no offense. It went pot kettle, but I, oh, like, and if like you can't blame someone for who they were in secondary school, like, no, your friends are no, married you now, like, it, and he's obviously sorry. Like, Alice has obviously been like, I'm, I didn't mean to do that. I was just swept up. And also, Alistair was doing it as a coping mechanism because he was getting horribly bullied. But oh. Yeah, but I guess like Matthew blames him for the yeah the... for him going and doing that potion thing. Yeah, but that was on you. You make your own decisions, Literally, mate. Sorry, I mean, look, that's the problem. Is Matthew doesn't own his decisions. He projects onto exactly. everyone else. And I'm like, Alistair yeah. didn't make you go to the shadow market and buy that potion. You did it. Yeah, you made that decision. Yeah, exactly. And t- you were a child, so we can't hold that against you. And we're not holding it against you. You're holding it against yourself. But anyway, yeah. I can't keep talking about Matthew. <laughs> Sorry. Let's move on. We ship Alistair and Thomas big time. So, we yeah, love it. OTP. We want them to be happy. Why love could? It. Why did it end like that? Why did it end on them on a bad note? We wanted happy endings. Literally. I guess everyone had a bad ending, it so they had to have on a bad too. note for everyone. But we loved them. We loved that exactly. Christopher, he's second on the list as being one of the highlights of this book. Wow, we love him. I love Christopher. <laughs> he, we just want we to protect him. him. Like he's so I just, genuine. He's my boy. I love him. I love him. I just I want to cuddle him and. When Grace and like the whole thing with like Grace and him, and I was like, oh, yeah, actually, my God. let's talk about that now because 
I loved that entire chapter. I thought it was fantastic. It completely changed my opinion of Grace because she, I feel like the reason she's so ruthless and yeah, it's partly in just because she has a bit of a nasty streak, but also because no one respects her. And like the minute that Christopher was like honestly interested in her opinion and talking to her about science and wanted to know what she thought, she was like, oh my God, I don't have to use my powers. I don't have to do any, I can literally just talk to this boy yeah. and feel seen. It- oh. You know what, this is a mild spoiler for if you haven't read like Shadow and Bone or whatever, mm-hmm. but it's kind of like similar to like Jenya and, yes, and David, David <laughs> in that. Um, but yeah, it, it's quite similar to that and I love Jenna and David. And yeah. you know what, it's really nice that, because obviously Christopher, I, I was really worried when we were reading this that Christopher would be similar. She'd just write Ty and Christopher being yeah, like, yeah, the yeah, same yeah. person. And I'm not getting that at all. Like, they are completely different. Like, Ty is nothing like Christopher. At all. And, you know, I'm really glad that we're getting to see more of Christopher's personality because he's just (laughs) fab. Like, such a little nerd. He's so enthusiastic. Yeah, he's such a little nerd. He's, like, enthusiastic. And I can't tell if he's meant to have, like, be autistic, like... I, yeah, because Ty, Ty is obviously... Co- like, Ty, they, yeah. they literally talk about it. But I feel like Christopher is just... He's probably maybe a little bit on the spectrum, but he's more just really into science. <laughs> and, like, yeah. no one else really understands him, which I also think is why Grace is good for him, because she also, like, probably more on, like, the necromancy side, but she's really into experimenting and learning. And so between the when two was- of them... Yeah, when he was like, oh, I'm probably boring you. I was like, I'm going to cry. I was literally going to sob. Like, I was literally getting teary because I was just like, I just, I'll listen to you talk about it. Like, any time. Oh, so, yeah, because he's obviously, like, been told by so many people to, like, that he is boring them. I was like, no, oh. we love you. Yeah, probably. Probably fucking Matthew. Probably. Because he just wants to talk about Oscar Wilde or something. But I'm like... <laughs> And Christopher, like, solved the... Him and Grace solved the whole, like, Pixis thing. Like, the... How they could transfer runes. I know, yeah. Yeah, they did. And it's like... What a dream team. What a dream team. It's amazing. I love them. And I... Just give me more of that, Cassie. Just miss all the other stuff. Give me more Christopher and Grace. And how they mutually respect each other and listen to each other when everyone else in the world has shut them down. And I'll be happy. I also, yeah, I also really loved when he like went to get her from the room before the wedding. He's like, "Oh, I'm coming to collect you, Grace." I was like, oh. <laughs> "I was like, so cute." And that's like a really good segue into the next section that we um, really liked, and that was yeah. James and Cordelia's wedding. And I just, I'm, I'm sad. It's bittersweet because I'm sad that mm-hmm. we didn't actually get to see James's genuine like reaction yeah to seeing her walk down the aisle because of the ring so it was clouded i, yeah. I would have loved to see what she, like his actual like yeah un un unaltered like, yeah plugged yeah unplugged feelings like when he first saw her walking down the aisle i would have like i feel like we've been robbed we've been robbed of that we would but, have been sobbing though to like I don't, I was sobbing at this to be honest. I, mean, I was sobbing at that, and I was when he. Oh, I think the only bit the, with the violins and Jem and the Jem courtyard the playing the violins. And... I literally. I think I didn't. I message you. I was like the violin. I know. Yeah. I think we were messaging each other like the wedding and like oh. her dress. Oh my god! I was when I they were describing the the dress with the gold, and I was like. Oh. <laughs> so I always beautiful. forget that they don't wear white for mm. wedding for shadow hunters because it's like the funeral garb. Yeah. So I was like, oh, this dress is amazing, and she was just like killing it. She had Cordelia, at Cord- Cortana in her <laughs> not Cordelia in her back. She had herself in her back. She had Cortana in her dress and like down her back, and I was like, this is so badass. Oh. And then. Like they were laughing and joking at the altar, and I was like, I literally am dying. Like I'm dying. They're so perfect. And then and like, when James... he took her to the house, 
I can't. The house. Jesus. Like, so they're rich, rich. Yeah. We didn't realise how <laughs> fucking rich they were. Okay, when he was like, oh yeah, we would like turn down the street to Mayfair. I was like, Mayfair? Like, I don't know if, if you're not from the UK. Yeah, what um, can we compare it to? Like, I guess if you're from America, Upper East Side. Yeah, like proper, like Fifth Avenue. <laughs> like... Yeah. But it, uh, I if you're from I don't know anywhere else I don't know it it's so it's like the, it's the posh posh part of London oh yeah like like gorgeous milli- houses I'm getting millions um yeah oh, you're looking millions yeah, like, not completely. just single figure millions like double like, figure millions those like houses big are for. bucks like whale tycoon like yeah like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so we were both like, oh, they're rich. Okay. Yeah. But he picked everything out for her. Uh. Oh my god, I just, I can't be bothered. It's just, it's so cute. Like, oh. they have a house together. I just, I can't. I love it. When I just she love was the like, domesticness. When she was like, oh my god, what if he's picked a horrible house? What if he's not decorated it? And then turned up and he'd like decorated it all nicely and got them a maid and although Effie an icon um but like, uh, you know what I'm so sick of women of female authors writing these fucking unattainable men I can't be bothered where the fuck do I find a James Herondale like I need one now I love him I'm in love with him oh, literally and 17 then, oh. year old 17 year old me is going I'm in love. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, 22-year-old me is simping for his dad, but 17-year-old Danny is going, you're the love of my life. This is it yeah, for me, James. Rich. And, like, and James is, like, my favourite name, so. Oh, the library. The library? Jesus Christ. Jesus fucking Christ. Where the fuck do I find one? <laughs> I want a house in. I want a house in Mayfair <laughs> with a library. Oh. Is that too much to ask? Literally. Where you can play a cute little games tournament where you tell each other things about each other to whoever wins and oh, read books about Constantinople. And... <laughs> oh my god, I it, oh, hate my life. It was just dreamy. It was so it was lovely. Perfect. I just shipped, if I didn't ship it before, I shipped it in this book. Yeah. Like I've shipped it since day one, but I really, really loved like James and Cordelia, this whole thing. It was so frustrating, but I like... I like the frustration. Yeah. I do like a slow burn. I've already said I like a slow burn. So it's going to be worth the wait. Yeah. Oh, I know it's it going to. I mean, speaking of frustration, can we talk about that kiss scene with him oh tied? Oh, my to God. The bed? We were literally saying, I was saying this to Deadly yesterday, we were like, how have we read A Court of Silver Flames and yeah. like I just read From Blood and Ash and like other like new adult fiction like Crescent City and all of that and it's straight smart, straight yeah. porn <laughs> and Cassie wrote this kiss and I felt the same thing I was going, Completely. my heart was going pitter patter pitter patter oh my god and I was like, Jesus. When, when he undid her corset on the wedding night in the like adjoining little bathroom thing that was smut that was filth. Wow. That was filthy. I oh was like, my God. Jesus. So, 17 year old me was going, ah! It's the, it, the way in these books it's written, like, hardly anything happens, but it's so sensual. And, like. I can't huh? even pretend that, like, they weren't dry humping when he was, <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, tied to the bed. Literally. Like, can we deny that? No. No. That was a bit less PG. Yeah. But. But other stuff, like when he just like brushes the hair out of her face, or like the he, she describes the color of like his eyes in the the sunlight. I'm like, well, oh my god, <laughs> <sighs> lockdown's really doing me no favors. <laughs> like, I need few interaction. <laughs> Literally, but I mean, I loved it. I lo- and like as you say, slow burn. I mean. We know it's going to be explosive when they both realise they actually have feelings for each other and it's reciprocated. I need at least half a book for that whole relationship. I need uh, like some we substance at literally, the end of this. Th- we're, I just know we're going to be tortured with like 
Matthew and Cordelia are in Paris, and James and Will try to find Lucy in Cornwall, and I'm like, get back together, and bang. <laughs> this next book better be hefty, because this like middle one was a bit skinnier than I thought. And yeah, I it was. 800 pages for this next book. She better because... be saving it all. I feel like exactly the it was a natural place to end the book, though, with all the heartbreak. Yeah. Uh, because that's just what Cass does. So I feel like if it had continued from that point, it wouldn't have made sense. So she probably cut it at where she needed to. I agree. Um, we loved the bachelor party <laughs> and the, and the bachelorette mermaid. party. The reverse mermaid. How mundane was the like bachelor party? I'm sorry, I loved that. I loved the boys being the boys. Like, do you know what I mean? It was so like, the good. lads night out. <laughs> It was so good at the pub, and then the pub everyone was, like, was buying them round. Yeah, oh my god, that was that was like the epitome of like British. Because I don't know if they do they have stag do's in America. Um, I don't know. Do they? They must in, do they internationally. Must do. Do you, yeah, they have bachelor parties. Yes, they do. Sorry, Whereas, like yeah. So don't like ask. bachelor parties, I feel like are very like. Ooh, showy. Whereas, like, a stag do in the UK is like, wait, let's get this. It's like, you get, <laughs> you get um, duct taped to a lamppost naked and it, yeah. With a traffic cone on your head. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, with a traffic cone on your head and upside down. That's, yeah. that's what it is. You get so drunk that you can't remember it. And Completely. So, and like, I feel like that was, was quite, the vibe. It was quite was nice like them to see at the a pub with a weird reverse mermaid. With a reverse mermaid. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It was so funny. Like, can you... I, can... <laughs> <laughs> I can't with... even imagine, like, a reverse mermaid with, the, like, the legs with The little kicking. legs and then a fish head. It killed me. Like, the way it was described, I was like... Because <laughs> when they were like, how's the mermaid going to get down the stairs? And I was like, yeah, what? <laughs> and then started walking down. I was like, no! I was in bits. I was in literal bits. And Christopher yeah, sat there like, get... oh. They're like, how's she going to get down the stairs? And she came down, she had legs. I was crying, honestly. I don't know why it was so funny, but it was. Because that's the sort of stuff that happens on a, like a... Yeah, literally. That was so British. Do. It just is. It's like at the pub, you're like, what? I know. It's so funny. Oh, it was just really... It was really fun. And I love how the girls were at like the Hell Royale and they were like drinking champagne and like dancing and yeah. like doing karaoke and stuff. I just thought it was just perfect. It was so good. Like it was quite tame. In yeah. Comparison to, but like they are like Regency, so... Yeah, um, we expected that, but it was just, I just really enjoyed that. Like, I thought that was a really nice touch from Cassandra. Yeah, it was. Um, uh, yeah, we, yeah, we spoke about that. Um, Will with the mortal sword. Just holding it, just, just strapped to his back. Wow, jeez. Honestly. Jeez, Louise. Strap knew? both of us to his back right now. Yeah, strap me to his back. <laughs> with that sword. I'll happily. have one. With the sword. When he was like, oh, this no, is a bit just heavy. No, replaced me with the sword. Oh. I was like, oh, his muscles would have been straining against his, his gear. <laughs> I just had the perfect visual. It was just perfect. Just like, and him smirking with it in his hand. I was like, Jesus, the strength, the power. Um, Honestly, imagine being things. Charles and realise how much you fucked up when Will Herondale turns up at the French Institute with the mortal sword strapped to his back. Yeah. You'd be like, oh. Whoops. Oops. Do um, it again, though. And I'd do it again. Pop, pop. Uh, <laughs> I know we were already spoken about, like, we didn't enjoy that, like, we wanted more from Lucy and Jesse's mm, relationship, but... but we loved the bit where they were, like, dancing in, in the, the rain. Snow. I just thought it was so, oh, it's so it's snow even. Like, I immediately googled it after finishing to see if there was any fan art and there is um i'll send it you to you didn't Daddy. send me the fan art <laughs> it's on my camera i th- i feel like i thought i sent it but i didn't um i'll have to send it after this but that visual is the kind of thing that makes your heart explode like sn- slow dancing in the snow with a ghost if that isn't my dream life then i don't know what is <laughs> 
Like, exactly. Danny's, Danny, wish... this is the thing. Me and Danny are Lucy and Cordelia. Like, your dream life is with James, and my dream life is with Ghost Jesse. It's all good. And that, now you've said that, that's really fucked me up, because that is true. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> what the fuck? It's so like, true. Like, dark-haired, <laughs> fucking rich. <laughs> James. His name's James as well. Literally, we all know that. Like, yeah. James is my favourite name for a guy. Um, Jesus. Yeah, and then the, the I'm scary. like the gothy ghost obsessed one that wants the weird ghost boy. And you're like writing fanfiction about me. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Get ready for the dashing Danny. Come on. The Dashing Danny, I love that. That would, I actually, watch me write it, I will. It'd be great. <laughs> yeah, please, because that's the only action I'm going to get from a fucking <laughs> fan fiction about myself. Um, but yeah, I just... Oh, yeah, just, we, we stand. That yeah. was just so cute. Oh, we, I just want more. Again, this just give me more. That's all I ask. Yeah, more of that, please, Cassandra. Um, We really liked... Uh, James, we love that James and Matthew have a really good pl- platonic relationship. What is that spell? <laughs> no, platonic. Platon- <laughs> That's what don't we say long. I was looking at this note and I was like, "What in the biology <laughs> homework is this note?" Like, Mama. Oh god. Um. Yeah. Um, so James and Matthew, we wish they spoke more, but when they do speak, it's like bros, and we love it. I just, I love the, like, casual affection that they have for each other, like, James touching, James, like, M- Matthew's face, like, the, the way that they mm. hug and that they're very affectionate towards, but it's, like, completely platonic, yeah. I love that, mm-hmm. like, it just, like, takes away all, like, the to- toxic masculinity that you get with, like, male friendships, and I just really love to read about it, it just feels really genuine. Yeah, it really does, and I feel like it's important to have male characters, especially in YA, that aren't so like ah oh, yes a warrior stoic da, da. like they are that but they're also soft and speak to each other and hug and just like lie around in the attic of a pub and chill like it's cute yeah I love it I just love the like casual touch like how comfortable they are within each other's presence it just mm-hmm. makes me feel really happy I just every time they do it, I just think oh I love it I love yeah. that they're friends. I love that they've got each other and I love that they look after each other. It makes me really happy. Yeah, me too. Um, Effie finding James <laughs> tied to the bed. Iconic. <laughs> you know what? Iconic. In her demanding a pay rise, queen shit. Yeah, literally. She, Effie, she... dropped your crown. <laughs> <laughs> if Effie had Twitter, we would all stab. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'd all have Effie stan accounts because she was getting that bread. She's so... As, she literally is just... She takes no shit and I feel it's so funny that James found the one maid that talks back. He, like, did it on purpose. He loves that. He, he loves being bossed does. about and that's why he's, like... He likes Cordelia because she'll just tell it how it is. Like, he yeah, likes it. Completely. But I just think it's so funny that she's like, right. And, like, again, on the audiobook, she had a proper Cockney accent. She's like... You right, right in here. That. What you doing? And I'm like, so funny. You're just like, I want to rise. I'm like, oh my god, yes. I want to raise. <laughs> Love that. And I'm taking the afternoon off. Amazing. An icon. <laughs> oh god. Oh. Um. Oh my god. Why do we have Grace telling Malcolm and things that we like? Is that is that? <laughs> no, purpose? I thought that was in dislikes, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh my god, iconic. Well, no, I think I might put it there. Okay, mm-hmm. way back. So, <laughs> I put Grace telling Malcolm in the likes because it gave us context for ah Lady Midnight. Because I yes, feel I like. Look- we, yeah, as I said, in all these other books, we've been like, Malcolm's so interesting and so cool, and like, why, when, when does it happen? When does he realise? And it was really interesting to see Grace be like, <laughs> fuck you, they killed her. Um, yeah. And like, yeah, it was a bitch move, but also I respected it. Um, I Yeah, I really like the links between all of the books, I, even though when they're subtle, I just think they're really 
well done. Yeah, like, especially completely. with that, like it's nice. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like Grace told us. Yeah, and like so now, I, now that's all. Yeah, and it's Grace Blackthorn. It was a Blackthorn that told him exactly, and like that. So goes it's like more whole... resentful. Oh, it's so cool. And yeah, and I think if obviously because Cassie's written these books so that you could pick up with Chain of Gold. It's not the first one. Yeah. Um, and you could read it. So I feel like you could read them and then not get that reference and then go on to read the other books and be like, oh my god. Or if you have read the other books, it just it links it back into this kind of wider world. And it's really cool. Yeah, I just really like the world building that she does. She has really great, like, she does really good Easter eggs for people that have read every single book. Mm-hmm. I was just saying to Deadly, like, we, we ha- both haven't read that flipping Red Scrolls of oh Magic, the second one, The Book of White. But as soon as I started, I started reading it again after the um, Chain of Iron, mm-hmm. I still haven't finished it. But then there was links to, oh, there was links of to Chain there of Gold is. that of we would have known. And I was like, for fuck's sake, I should have read it first. But yeah, I just we, really we literally back, never learn. Like, that. like, we have to read it, yeah, read do. everything in release order because they all link. And, yeah, uh, they do. But yeah, and I yeah. mean, that's, that's what we liked. We, we liked a lot of it. Um, and I, I think it was a really successful book. It flowed really well. Once you got into it, you just finished it because it's one of those books yeah. that you're like, give me it all. It was classic YA. Like she, I say this every time. It's classic YA. It's mm-hmm. just perfect. The, like the the formula she gets right every time. It was frustrating. We say we dislike these things. We like we dislike them in a good way. Yeah. Oh, Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like how we like disliked the frustrations that we had. Apart from the incest, but everything yeah. else, I think it's like we get we know it's going to be resolved in the next book, but it was just frustrating. Yeah, it's not like an actual read. hate. It's like a, oh my god, I hate that this happened, but we know yeah. why that why it's there. But it, yeah, we just we have to explore our emotions by ranting about it. Except the incest that didn't need to be in there, but like yeah. exactly, it's great. So we are going to talk about what we think is going to happen in the next book, which is the last one in this series, which I'm not ready for the next one to be the last one in this series because I'm not ready to say goodbye to these characters. Neither am I. But yeah, the first prediction that we have for the next book is that there's going to be a spicy, spicy rune ceremony (laughs) where they put the runes over each of his hearts. And by they, we mean Cordelia and James. And you know what? I'm ready for it. I'm excited. I've been waiting for it. I thought we might have got it. I thought we might have got it this episode, this episode, <laughs> this uh, book, but we didn't. I thought I it. thought we were going to get it at the end. You know when his bracelet snapped and he was like, <gasps> "Yeah." I was like, "Oh my yeah. god, we're going to get the spicy rune scene." And then Grace knocked on the door, and I was like, "How dare you?" Yeah. How? But I think that's going to happen for sure. Completely. For sure. I think Lilith is going to come back in some capacity um, because Cordelia is going to have to deal with that. Um, which I'm not ready for, um, but it has to happen in the next book because we won't see these characters again, um, and it can't just leave with Cordelia being Lilith's paladin, like just a puppet for the rest of her life. But we obviously um, know they can't kill Lilith because she comes. Well, you can't kill Lilith, can no, you? No, exactly. No, true. She's got to possess Jace. Yeah. Hmm. Does she possess Jace? Yeah, or something. And, yeah, and then yeah, and then her, her, her child. child and... Because and even you? that was a little Easter egg. Because in this, uh, Belial was like, "You can't have children, oh, Lily." Fuck. And I See, was like, she's just too damn good. <laughs> and I was like, "Well." I was like, "Belial, God, you, yeah. Belial, watch and see." Uh, because... And then he has kids. So yeah, literally. <laughs> Although he did it in a creepy ass way, so next thing that we are predicting <laughs> is that Cordelia <laughs> The next <laughs> the, anyway. next thing we're... the next thing we're predicting is that Cordelia and Lucy finally become Parabatai. It's gotta happen, surely. I feel like that would be a great like towards the end of the book. Like obviously we need to get Cordelia and James reunited da, da, da. but I feel like if we go through the whole thing and then we could end with them being Parapetai, I'd be happy yeah, same uh, sorry, I've just read the next one <laughs> the next one was, this was my note I think Grace is going to throat punch Effie to escape <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm like, James, oh, you left this known criminal in your house with only your maid to guard her. I know she hasn't been trained, <laughs> but she's wily. I reckon she could get a throat punch in. I'm going to... I'm going to um, counterpoint that and go, Grace throat punches Effie to get away, but then Effie throat punches Grace back <laughs> and gets her into like a bind. And then he's like, gives James a rollicking when he gets home for like leaving her behind with a psychopath. I think that's going to happen. And then we need to get Effie for console badges made. Yes. <laughs> Effie for console. <laughs> I love that. Just imagine her trying to like deal with downworlders. She'd be like, nah. Oh my god. She'd be great. But yeah, um, I I don't trust Grace uh, leaving her. Because he hasn't even told the Clave or anyone. He's only... He hasn't told anyone. He only he just yeah. said to Effie that she was bad. He didn't even say what she could do. So no one knows that she could control no. men. Because he's now gone to Cornwall. I know. Jesus. And yeah, fuck. It's, something's going to go wrong there because James has just been stupid, so... Yeah, uh, yeah. that whole last Ugh. chapter, I was like, James, pull it together. Get a grip, mate. Get a grip. We think the next cover is going to be Grace because there has been a, a... Obviously, the first one was Cordelia, the second one was Lucy, and I think the three main female characters in the series are Cordelia, Lucy, and Grace. Uh, and I yeah. think it's going to be a really, like ghosty cover with her long flowing like white silver hair um i think it's gonna look really cool someone on twitter <laughs> tweeted at cast like is it gonna be james and she was like yes james with his long flowing locks <laughs> <laughs> because obviously all yeah. of them have really exaggerated hair in these covers um and the first was so the first cover was at leaves in Cordelia's yeah. hair. And then this one was Moth. Yeah, it was. Uh, in Lucy's. So I'm curious to see what's going to be with Grace. Um, but I'm excited. Because I feel like they're going to look so good as a collection. And Yeah. Like, colours-wise, they just... They'll sit... Because really, Cordelia obviously has the flame red hair. And then on this one, it's got, like, the yellow moths. So I hope they do something maybe, like, blue-toned. I don't know. I think it'll be really interesting. Yeah, well, I, the, the the main colour is it was green blue, so I think it'll be red or something. Yeah, with like a really ghosty looking grace. Yeah, we'll see. Tatiana and Belial. Oh shit! They were like, whipped off at the end, didn't they? So <laughs> she, think... she literally pulled up, and he was like, "Bye, let's go." He's like, "Get in, loser. We're going shopping." That's literally what <laughs> Belial said. And the Iron Sisters were like. Sorry, what? Yeah. Oh, she fucking blew up the... <laughs> the Citadel. The, the Iron... Oh. Is it the Iron Citadel? Yeah, what the... Is I... it? The... Fuck. Spiral the Labyrinth? Maze. Spiral Labyrinth? No. Spiral Labyrinth, yeah. That's yeah. It. She blew up that and then fucked off, so that's going to cause some shit. And I think that... Aren't Gem and Magnus there? Yeah, they were going there to look for the Lost Book of the White, lol. Um... <laughs> Because they realised it wasn't so that's as gonna, cool as <laughs> That's um, going to cause some shit. I think... Did you read the extra chapter at the end? Yes, I think. Where they... Where, where Gem yes. and yeah, yeah, yeah. are on... Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, they're definitely... So that's going to fucking cause some crap. I'm not really sure what. I hope the, the next book opens with Belial and Tatiana just chilling on the beach in the Bahamas. Same, I ship it actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's peaked my audio. Okay. Um... Telly all. <laughs> yeah, peak my audio as well, sorry. Oh, oh my god. god. Yeah, that's our new I'm ship. Delirious. Get delirious. Get rid of all the other ships. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But yeah, um, I think that's it from us. Yes, we hope you've enjoyed us chat about this is our first yeah enjoyed our first shadow hunters podcast there will obviously be more as first the series of many yes um i think you're going to be hearing a you're going to have another bonus episode from us soon where we talk about mm-hmm. grisha verse and then another one where we talk about uh rule of, rule of wolves. wolves 
So we are going to be Grisha in and out soon. So if you're a fan of the Grisha Bear series, then keep an eye out for those episodes. Um, they're going to come soon because we have literally we're filming this and it's with like two day, one or two days. Two days. Two days. Two days until Shadow and Bone is on Netflix, oh and we gosh. literally cannot wait. I think so it will so be much. out, and it'll already be out. Yeah, when this we'll, we'll, we'll out. be releasing this like two days after it comes out. So, mm-hmm. hope you guys, yeah, look out for our next episode, which should be coming soon. Um, and until next time, read good books, take no shit, and have a good time. Yeah, and throat punch your enemies. That's our <laughs> advice. So, we'll talk to you soon. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> Bye!